Hello everyone, it's Daniel here, enthusiastic Tai Chi student and podcast newbie. So please just be kind if we have any problems here today, although fingers crossed everything will go to plan. Anyway, like I said, I am a Tai Chi student myself. It's something I've been part of uh, now for 12, going on 13 years. And it's something that I've found really helped me in my personal life and with my own health. So I was thrilled when I was watching the new Chris Hemsworth docuseries Limitless on Disney Plus, and I saw Tai Chi featured. And that the man many call the father of Tai Chi in Australia, Grandmaster Gary Kaur, had been chosen by the producers to talk about its benefits as part of the episode. I'm so grateful to have the opportunity day, today to briefly talk with Grandmaster Kaur, who is the president and founder of the Australian Academy of Tai Chi, about the show, about Tai Chi's benefits, and why he thinks that it's not just an old person's game. Grandmaster Kaur, thanks for making time for a few questions today. Hello, Daniel. Pleased to be here. All right. So when I saw you talking with Chris Hemsworth in uh, what is the sixth episode of Limitless, I was really interested to hear how you discovered Tai Chi at such a young age because of uh, or as a result of you suffering a serious injury so uh, that you couldn't continue with your martial arts that you'd done before. But I don't know if it was actually mentioned in there or not that you are actually a grandmaster in this style of exercise and part of the reason they chose you to be part of the series. So I wanted to utilise your experience today and start by asking you quickly to share with people who might not be familiar, what is Tai Chi, you know, and where does it come from and is it easy to learn? Mm -hmm. Well, Tai Chi... Uh, I think most people would have seen some form of it, you know, when you see a group of people, especially uh, seniors, older age group people, doing this very slow motion exercise. It's almost like a slow dance. Mm -hmm. uh, that usually is Tai Chi. Now, so from the outside, it looks like, you know, a kind of a very slow motion type of exercise. And yet sometimes you see a fist being formed, you know, I think they're doing a kind of a mimic, a kind of a slow motion martial art. Well, traditionally, Tai Chi was developed as a martial art. You know, that, uh, it has self-defense uh, application. Every move, every block, every stretch, you know, it's a martial art movement. That mm. is the traditional type of Tai Chi. However, um, because of the nature of Tai Chi, you know, because it is soft and flowing, you know, it's become very relaxing, very easy to relax. A lot of people cannot relax when yet they're asked to sit still or stand still. In fact, standing still is a very difficult movement. It requires a lot of uh, balancing. Yes. Movement is a natural uh, gate for human beings. You know, and that slow movement you know, is almost like a rocking in the cradle. You know, and mm -hmm. it brings on relaxation. Now, however, you know, hidden inside there, as I said, all the movements are very precise, you know, when you do it properly. Now, um, so we have the traditional Tai Chi with uh, martial arts self-defense base. However, because of the nature of Tai Chi, it also induces tremendous relaxation, both physically and mentally, because to do the movement, you actually have to concentrate. It's not random movement. It's, it's not free form. There are actually certain sequence, certain you know, way that you move. And so that requires concentration. Now, when we start to concentrate our mind, and especially when you do it in a very relaxed manner, you let go you know, of the tension in the body, it actually it brings on a kind of a mental relaxation as well as physical relaxation. Now, the mental relaxation comes from the mind focusing and concentrating on what you're doing. Mm. And that actually stops the brain from thinking. And especially when you relax and you gently stretch and you can actually feel the sensation in your body, that now has become the focus of the mind. In meditation, it's called a mantra. A mantra is something that the mind focuses on and it has to be neutral. We do not want it to 
get the mind, you know, something that has got meaning and the mind locks onto it and then it's linked up and start linking up to other thoughts. Yeah, distract you. Yeah, and the mind becomes busy again. That's why they refer to that like the monkey mind, that we never stop thinking. Yes, Even yes. In our sleep, we are still thinking in the dreams. Yes, yeah. Meditation is a way to focus the mind and so that you stop the brain from thinking. And that gives the brain a chance to relax, let go, you know, because the moment we start thinking, you know, emotion, feelings start coming in. And gradually, if you start moving on to problems that you're trying to solve, you know, deadlines, or you try to finish a relationship that's not going too well, financial problem, you know, all those sort of things, you know. And so we say that the mind is a sea of turmoil. Mm-hmm. So to clear that, you know, that turmoil of stirring in the mind, to clear that is to focus it, and especially on something, you know, that is neutral or something that is so involved with. So it's like you allow the cloudy water, uh, the dirt to settle, you know, all the dirt to settle down to the bottom, and then you have a clear pool, so you have a clear mind. So, mm. so that's why Tai Chi is famous for relaxation mm. but however if you go deeper into it that is people when they start when they join or start tai chi they see it as a gentle exercise and as i said by doing those things you feel relaxed you feel good but as you go deeper into it you start to realize there's something much more in that you know that by focusing and going slow your mind now concentrate and you're actually laying down track in your nervous system. You're imprinting every sensation, you know, every angle, every move that you make, every rotation, every pull, every stretch, all that are being recorded you know, into your body, in fact, into your cells, you know, mm. from the nervous system, from the muscles, all that is going into it. Yes. And as modern science is now saying we've got 50 trillions of these cells in our body. Mm. Every one of them, you know, it's like a baby within each human being. Mm. Anyway, so by laying that track in this over and over again, the same precise movement, so that now it's like your whole being are being permeated by this knowledge, imprinted with this knowledge, mm. so that it uh, it becomes from the conscious mind where you're learning with the conscious mind, it now gradually recedes into your subconscious and then it become a, become a part of you, become your unconsciously. Yeah. We can take one example like driving a car. You know, when we start off learning a car, you know, you find that you're always very nervous, you gotta pay so much attention. And in fact, we almost grip the steering wheel and we're so focused that we become rigid and tense. You know? yeah. so Especially afraid. when you're driving somewhere you've never been before. Yeah. 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 But you know, day after day, gradually you go from the learners, the license, you know, getting the L plate to the P plate and become, you know, over the years, you know, you, you come to a stage where nowadays you get into the car, you, you don't even think about it. You, Turn on ignition, you put on the music, you don't even think about how you're going to drive a car. It becomes automatic. Yeah. And that's because each day as you drive the car, you're doing the same thing over and over again. You're imprinting that. So every cell, muscle cells and joints and everything, you know, have learned this coordination. And it's like a symphony, you yeah. know, like an orchestra. So everybody knows what to do. So even if you were suddenly were to face an accident, let's say you're driving and suddenly a little boy rush or a dog rush in front of you, yeah, mm-hmm. you will automatically know how to slam on the brake, mm-hmm. maybe turn the wheel, maybe to evade, you know, and maybe even horning, pressing yeah. the horn to sound danger. Mm-hmm. All those instantaneous action, the brain's got no time to think. Consciously, you've got no time to think. It is your subconscious just took over. The moment you saw danger, you had a spark off. And that's how what Tai Chi is. Mm-hmm. That by doing all that gradually, you know, it becomes 
yeah, you become Tai Chi. You enter into what we call like the zone. Almost like imprinting that um, state of relaxation into the nervous system. Yes, yeah, so that it becomes uh, automatic. Yes. So yeah. you become, it's a, it, it's a, you be, you become Tai Chi. You be, you know, instead of doing Tai Chi, you become it itself. You know, it's like uh, you merge into, you know, into this thing that, that uh, you know, this movement. You know, so, and it has uh, a lot of benefits. Like health, we tend to think in terms of physical, you know, sculpturing the body, the physical, you know, the beauty. That's what we tend to focus on, you know, losing weight and looking good and so forth. But that is the external, mm. right? When we get to Tai Chi, the first, after learning the basic Tai Chi, which is more the comfortable, easy going, gentle type of exercise Tai Chi, mm. we then enter into another space that we realize either that if we progress further, either we are required to keep the body upright. So now the posture comes in. Mm. Keep the posture upright, it is not just to push it up, which is tensing the body. Mm. Most people take that you know, as the way to be upright. Like in the, being you know, in the, on parade, like the soldiers, you know, yes. that is tension to keep upright. In Tai Chi, it is the skeleton, you know, the, the skeleton is pushed upright, gently pushed upright, and then the skeletal frame is spread out. Mm. And the muscles and the flesh, like a piece of cloth, we relax and let it drape over it so that we've got this upright posture, well-balanced you know, mm. inside the, the skeleton, the upright, but, ex you know, but the muscles, everything's relaxed. Yeah, so even even with posture, that everything is graceful and relaxed. Yes, yes, that, and also you are mindful. That means that you're aware of every, your balancing mechanism, the muscle, which you know each part of the body. You mm. know, so now you've got a posture and you walk upright. Yeah, you know? and I think there's one other art that relates very much to this, and it's called Alexander technique. Ah, you know? and Alexander technique would only recommend Tai Chi as the art. You know, that goes side by side with it. The way we walk, the way we present, the way that we move, you know, we're always upright, we're always relaxed, and the awareness is always there. So so that so you move, you know, when you move, it's almost we say moving meditation, you know, and you're always well balanced. Yeah, you know, and and, and that, that's something we hear all the time, isn't it? Tai Chi is moving meditation. That's right. And you're mindful all the time. Like nowadays, we hear a lot of mindfulness. But mindfulness means that the here and now that you're focused. Right? In yeah. Tai Chi, we develop a kind of awareness, you know, all over the body and also of our surrounding to a certain extent. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. So that you're always, and yet you're always relaxed, but you're always aware. So that your awareness spread from the inside, you know, gradually to all around you. Mm. Yeah, so that's why body mind. Like converging with part of your environment. You're really sensing everything around you. That's right. You practically merge into it and you become, as you say, if you're out in nature, you become nature itself. Yeah, 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 that's right. And so um, going back to your story from the episode with Chris, and you, you started quite early practicing Tai Chi then. Um, so was that uncommon at the time? Because um, you know, being a younger person doing Tai Chi now, I noticed that at least here in the West nowadays, it seems you don't get many younger people practicing Tai Chi as opposed to, I suppose, some of the other mind-body type exercises. You see young people doing yoga and Pilates, but not so much Tai Chi. So why do you think that is? I think it's a different culture. In the Chinese culture, because we... In the Chinese culture, martial art, Kung Fu has always, you know, Kung Fu or Kung Fu has always been part of, you know, the, the stories we hear. We grew up with that all around us. And Tai Chi, we are more likely, a Chinese, uh, you know, or an Asian child is more likely to relate Tai Chi as martial art, con you know, contains martial self-defense in it. Yeah. In a Western world, I suppose the culture is more towards athletic type of fitness. So when they look at Tai Chi, they see it as this soft moving thing, you know, uh, more related to weakness, you know, and 
you know, and and all and especially when you see elderly people doing it, that how could it be health healthy? And especially this drive towards aerobic, you know, mm. that cardiovascular fitness. And so used to that, you gotta be forceful, you gotta be hard, you, you gotta be aggressive, you gotta be powerful, you know, that's what health is in their yeah. mind. They could never, I suppose, a child, you know, growing up in such an environment could never realize that you could have, you know, generate power. For example, sitting, sitting here like this, I'm like, mm, mm, mm. yeah. So mm. from a relaxed state, suddenly I tense and flash. Mm. But to do that, I must first learn relaxation. That means I must be able to relax my whole body and let and let my whole body weight flows, you know, falls downward to the floor. But the moment it hits the floor, my feet must push off, bounce off straight away, and my muscle tense for that moment and spiral all the reaction force. That's it. When it hits the ground. Let that the reaction force travel up my skeleton, my body, and then turn. I then manipulate to turn my hip right, and spiral that energy up. And mm. as it comes out of the shoulder, I must turn at the right time and then launch. You know? So again, I'll demonstrate that. Mm. Right? Oh. Yes. So a sudden thing, you know, the, the mind is controlled, but I, the body, and now you know what to do with it. So it becomes like a whip. Mm. Like it's easy to visualize a pole, a stick, a hot stick to hit with. But it's much more difficult to be able to use a whip, a soft piece, you know, of me, but then you can learn to crack it. It's mm. not easy to crack a whip. You I've know? never tried, but yeah. So, you know, but someone who used a cracking whip would just... You know, and, and and because so I think it is through that I grew up with that sort of background knowledge. And as a child, I was actually into everything. Yeah. You know? I swam in the river, which actually had a few crocodiles in it, but at the time too too young to you can't see it, that means it's not no, that see the danger. Yeah. Countries. I did all all those things, you know. And also at that time we don't have videos, we don't have TV, you know. And so you gotta do all those things that any child growing up in the you know, let's say out back and in or in back in those days where we don't have all this entertainment that you make your own entertainment. Mm. And as in sport in school, even at the age of you know seven seven years old, I remember I was playing this riding horses. You know, not real horse, but just galloping on with friends. And then oh, about 10 years old, that time I remember the school we had in the primary school, there was, there was, they actually organized basketball games with another school, you know. So I was introduced to basketball and got interested in it and continue on. We even have our own team, even, you know, when I was 13 year old, we, did, we, we started our own team. So that's another thing not known that uh, my actually number one game was basketball. And at that time, even in Australia, you know, when it, uh, people don't know, we don't play basketball. You play footy, footy, you play other things. But basketball was only I was in all yeah. kinds of sports right? the, uh, at a young age. And Kung Fu was a natural progression because, you know, seeing movies, Chinese movies, you know, and... Uh, it was something where, uh, as a child, oh, gee, you want to be able to defend yourself, you know, like all the heroes in, in the movies. Mm. And so I started um, learning some Kung Fu movies. But of course, in the Chinese family, in the evening or in the morning, usually <clears throat> the more the seniors or the elderly would be doing Tai Chi as part of a culture that they, you know, that they follow. So sometimes I get put on to the shoulder of an uncle, you know, while we're doing the art and, and also see it all around. So it become, you know, I grew up with that sort of a background knowledge. Mm. Uh, and so it's much uh, easier progression for me and the knowledge that knowing that Tai Chi is actually a soft but internal type of martial art that you could develop the power within. That the kung fu, all that is the external power, is powerful, you know, mm. but it's external. You know, it's all about muscles and strength and all that. 
then those who after learning kung fu who going they when they rise up transcend to a higher level they start to develop this thing called chi and internal strength internal power yeah and then tai chi is classified as one of those art that is on top of the basic type uh, basic kung fu skill develops that power yeah. yeah and so i guess it's it's sort of baked into the culture then is what you're saying yeah so it's not such an uncommon thing there to think uh, about a younger person starting to study this yeah that's correct yes and an emphasis probably in in recognizing the long term study that it takes time to develop the skill yeah well as i become more knowledgeable you know as i mature and grew and also in in the progress in kung fu in different things that i do uh and also i the study of science in the and also during especially the uh, the sixties and seventies where uh, consciousness started to enter you know, into the vocabulary uh, and somehow maybe because I was very much attracted to nature to on alternative lifestyles and somehow you know I was drawn to that area so I started paying a lot more attention towards the other aspects. You know, yeah. I find that what I learned, you know, for example, in the 70s here, I, I took part in biofeedback research because I was studying science at the uni. Um, and my Tai Chi and Qi Kong became uh, an excellent example for them to use. I become like the guinea pig. You know, they will put electrodes on me. And uh. using, you know, I meditate. Yeah, you know, and then that to test the uh, the biofeedback you know, um, um, of Tai Chi and Qi Gong. Um, so that developed into that, you know, uh, consciousness, body, mind, spirit, those all those come in. But my base has always been you know, uh, the self-defense martial art and science, you know, as my check, you know, on and to validate what I do. And then I have a culture to draw from. So, mm -hmm. you know, from, from that, I continue to draw. And also my curiosity. I think that plays a huge part. Mm. I would agree. I think curiosity just in my own journey from, you know, very early on, beginner, to where I am now and continuing on, that curiosity in what you're doing, um, you know, in the art as a whole, but every time you practice as well, that you're almost... Um, it's almost like you're seeking for something, but not in a strenuous or active way. It's a very relaxed um, inquisitiveness almost about what's going on in the body as you practice. Yeah. So, so that's, that's yeah. It yeah. is rewarding in its own way that you know, you're curious about something, you found the answer, and you go, wow, you know, mm -hmm. sort of uh, the, 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 the gratification that comes from it, that yes. you know, the, the success from doing yes. it. And especially when you you can you can start applying it to you know to what you're doing, and mm -hmm. then you become more meaningful, and then you find that there's even more and deeper aspects to it. It sort of continue to draw you you know in to want to learn more and to discover oh. more about yourself, about the world, you know, about yeah. human nature. And to this day, even though I'm seventy five years old, you know, I'm still just as in fact more curious. The more I learn, the more curious I become. You know, all the yeah. same, that the more you know, the more you realize how little that you really know. You know, but uh, it, it 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 sort of you know it there's just this you know, attraction that this mm -hmm. joy that to go you know to want to know more and do more, and mm -hmm. especially now that it becomes so meaningful because now I do it because I actually need it now. It is now, you know, as I age, as the body parts start to fail or start to, to diminish, uh, I find that to boost myself up, to strengthen myself, to ward off the disease, to continue to stay health, healthy, you know, more and more, I understand about how important the immune system is. That if I want to live longer, which now longevity is now a big thing. For years, I've been telling, you know, people who wants to know that, you know, we, you've got to live until at least 100 years old. People used to laugh and I make it into a joke. They're all my students, you know. 
you must all live to at least 100 years old. I'm going to start a club, the 100 Euro Club. And people used to laugh. But now, you know, scientists are talking about it. And it's now that with technology and with research, you know, the advancement of research and technology, we are now taking on that 100 years should be no problem. Mm. That we have overcome so many types of diseases that aging is no more considered in a as a natural thing now. Age mm. is now considered like a disease now. That if you learn either to live healthily and do certain things like doing Tai Chi and different fitness, health exercise, that your body, you can actually bring it onto another level that we are not either using enough. We're allowing ourselves either to deteriorate, to deteriorate. So that now the advancement is we can actually do something about aging. And so, over- so pulling on that thread, because I wanted to ask you something about um, why Tai Chi is practiced so slowly. So let's pull on that thread of longevity as well in, in our answer. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, you know, aside from being then a gentle uh, exercise that um, might be used for rehabilitation or something, You know, when people think of Tai Chi, as we said before, they don't always see it as exercise. Um, They think that to exercise, you have to get the heart rate up, you have to get sweaty for it to be of some benefit. So, um, yeah, going back to what you just said about longevity, is there a reason why Tai Chi is then performed so slowly? Um, Is there a method to that? You know, what's the reason? Okay, to start off with, in the past, you know, from observation, we relate that you know, fast, powerful, active movement, you know, that is what's going to bring you health. That this slow moving you know, type of movement called ex- Tai Chi exercise, it's not going to do that. It's non-aerobic. However, with medical research, they now found that even slow moving exercise like Tai Chi provided you do it non-stop, continuous for 20 minutes and do it at the moderate rate, you can actually achieve the same result as other aerobic type of exercises. Mm-hmm. So now that gives us a leeway that for those who do not want to punish themselves or find it too stressful, too strenuous you know, to, to do all those aerobic exercise, there is now a much more milder, gentle, gentle way that you can still get the result, you know, without having to exhaust yourself doing it. And in fact, that there are even su- suggestion that if you overexert yourself and end up creating unnecessary stress, that will actually suppress your immune system. Wow. And immune system is what's going to protect us because there is no cure no f- against the virus. Mm. And you know, all the drugs, all the vaccine, all the mil- billions of dollars, all those great scientists still are unable to come up you know, with this chemical thing. That So it's about defense within first. Within Tai Chi itself. In fact, it's very advanced because when we're working with you know, with this, what we call chi with energy, we are actually entering a deeper phase that even in chemicals, from the science point of view, all those all chemicals, when you reduce it further down to the smaller thing, you know, you will, for example, whatever chemical will end up with a formula, whether it's carbon or, you know, or, or, or uh, you know, what you call oxygen, the CO, whatever. And then you go even further into the atomic structure of itself. That what would it, what do we come to? The energy, you know, the electron, the protons, the neutron. What are they? They are energy. So entering the nuclear mm. state, that is the atomic state, mm. and that is energy. Mm. And so the future, you know, of medicine is energy medicine. We are already using it in a sense, you know, like the, the scan that we use. First was the X-ray, then with the ECG, EGG, and then now we got this, the MRI scan, yeah? Um, and, you know, and so 
that these are energy medicine, but they're too expensive for us to afford it. However, in Tai Chi and Qigong, we're already using it. But so it works on a very deep level. But for, and I'm talking, I guess, specifically now for those younger generation we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. um, how, yeah, what benefits can it bring to those people apart from, say, the immunity, um, mm -hmm. you know, to, to attract them to the art? What is it that uh, Tai Chi can do for them specifically? Okay. So basically, everyone has to exercise, right? So you, there are like everything variety, whichever the one that suits you, that, that you want to, you can. Um, that the first thing is not to see Tai Chi as old people's exercise. You know, now the ones we cleared it up, say, no, this is it's not, you know, and, and not the old people exercise. It is exercise for everyone. It's actually mm -hmm. more like at what rate, you know, at, at what pace you want to exercise. You can go hard. You know, if you feel like it, go hard for it, you know. But if you said, no, I sort of uh, do not enjoy that so much. I prefer a milder pace. That by doing it, you can get similar result to the harder pace. Plus, there are other things, there are other benefits in this art that you can't get from, you know, from the other one which you exert. Mm. Because within relaxation, what mindfulness is going to come from the slow, relaxed focus. You know? Mindfulness is not going to come from the heart. Yes, you can get a little bit of that, but it is not conducive to working it that way. You know? Mindfulness, you, you, you more relate to relaxing, letting go, and focusing. In fact, mindfulness, you do not want the body to distract your mind. Yeah? Mm. So how can you move without creating unnecessary because every move that you make triggers a sensation mm. that goes through your nervous system into the brain right? every move you know so every breath every move so how can you if mindfulness because what makes a human being is the human brain you you know you can lose an arm you can lose a leg you can lose an eye you can lose your ears and whatever and you can still function but you lose an organ inside the body or if you lose a little bit of the brain you're gone mm. you know so you know so a human being basically who or what you are is what's inside the mind there so that's going to be the number one mm. and in fact the whole body probably exists to keep the brain alive mm. Yeah. Mm. so therefore once that knowledge is understood and knowing the importance you know, of different parts of the body, then we might pay more attention and start to see the benefits of doing, ex doing exercise, whatever, that you know, can give us certain ben benefits, you know, enjoyment, and yet it's in the long run, it's going to give us more dividend out of it. So it's young, of course, yeah. everybody wants to enjoy and have fun. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because you know you, we hear every year it's almost an annual thing about the HSC students coming up for their exams and the amount of stress that uh, students are under. And also, it was really um, disheartening a little while ago, coming out of the pandemic lockdowns, especially to hear the rates of um, mental illness, anxiety, and stress mm -hmm. in particularly it seems the younger population being separated from friends and things has taken a toll. And mm. so that an art maybe like Tai Chi can help with mm. some of those symptoms. So, I mean, do you think maybe a wellness practice like Tai Chi is something the younger generation are missing today? Because um, it certainly seems there's plenty of focus on, you know, cardiovascular fitness that we spoke about earlier and you said about body aesthetics Yep. Uh, which we all know the benefits of being fit and strong, but mm. by itself, it's always been a bit um, almost superficial to me. Mm. You know, if you're just overtraining or you may be causing long-term damage to the body by going too hard, mm. but um, to look after your mind as well. And as you said, the nervous system, the immune system, do you think Tai Chi can bring a bit of balance to yeah. um, an approach to wellness for younger people? Yeah, definitely. In fact, very interesting. This 
brings me back to in the early days, 1976, when I started my first Tai Chi uh, class. Back in those days, you know, because before then, I was also trained in Wing Chun, you know, the Bruce Lee type of martial art. And there was a mm. group of us doing it. And in fact, those colleagues that I trained with, people like Lawrence Lee, Yid Man Lee, they were the, the first people to operate uh, Wing Chun classes in Sydney. In fact, Lawrence Lee became the household name in Sydney. Mm. But I stayed in the back, you know, because I uh, were more interested in the wider field. You know, science, nature, philosophy, and all that. So, um, anyway, so when I first introduced Tai Chi, people even laughed at, at it, and friends said, "No, don't do it." You know, and some even call it, "Oh, that is the King's Cross Karate." You know, very sissy. Then mm. I should stay with the Wing Chun, the Bruce Lee, you know, uh, yeah. type of uh, kung fu. Um, but most of them uh, were not that's it, uh, interested in subjects like consciousness, uh, yeah, like into uh, the alternative lifestyles, which, you know, uh, would you believe that back in the early 70s that I was already involved with alternative lifestyles and uh, into this food we call the organic food. Mm. Uh, back in those days, organic food were run by hippies in mm. little health food shops. And they usually grow their own organic food and they don't put it in fridge so that it, it looks a bit, don't look that fresh and it'll you know, get damaged and you know, bruised and things like that. There was before business people start moving in and convert, converting those health food shop into a more modernized business type. Anyway, I was already involved in that, my interest. So I was one of the early you know, adopters you know, into the alternative hub. Uh, uh, lifestylers, you know, I was even in, involved with a group called the Down to Earth group. At that time, we have the thing we call Confess, the Down to Earth Confess, you know, where a group of people, you know, up to 20, 30,000 once a year will go out to some property way out, you know, and commune with nature, you know. So we have all different groups, you know, and would you believe all believe in nature totally snoot in the nook, you know. To, it's it's a challenge to actually uh, be a part of you know, something that already believe in that you know commune with nature that's mm -hmm. so used in the cities that to be fully clothed and to be suddenly go nude it's a very confronting you know mm -hmm. and yet if you are wearing a piece of cloth everybody looks at you because you stands out from mm -hmm. everybody but the moment you drop it and remove it nobody looks at you because you become like everybody else, become like nature, you know? Yeah. And so people are now interested in you, in your mind, in what you are, and not in your physical. Mm. You know, you look. So that was a, a big lesson that uh, I learned about fear, you know, fear and convention, you know, and things that are new is actually quite threatening if you're not, you know, uh, it's very difficult to buy into it. Mm. So uh, like, that's why I became like a pioneer because I'm always the first one that try out new things that would venture in a goal where other fear to tread. It's the angel where angel fails to uh, fear to tread. That's where I, I would stick my head in and find out what it's all about, you know? Um, it sounds like you've always been like that. You said the same thing about your basketball interest earlier on as well, that yeah. it wasn't really a big thing, but you, you jumped right into it before it was popular. Back in those days when I was 14 or 15 years old, still going to high school, I was actually playing for a professional business uh, business team. You know? mm. Most of those people that were in their 20s and older, but I was 14, 15, and what I had was speed, very fast. And so they wanted two very fast wings on playing. You know? And so every time the older one I exhausted, they put us in the young wings where we would just fly up, you know, uh, through the courts. Anyway, so that's another part of my history. <laughs> However, so this pioneering spirit, like now, for example, my research is to come up with a kind of non-drug vaccine mm. based on energy, right? Uh, based on uh, using uh, energy and uh, stimulating the stem cells in in the bones, you know, and Anyway, it's a big story behind it. I got a book that I hope to publish it sometime uh, 
this year. Anyway, so that's sidetracking from uh, from what we say. But for the younger people, uh, it's like everything is that first uh, they got to sort of wash away from their mind that these are all people exercise. Once they realize that you know Tai Chi is for everyone, that there are so many good things about it that you can't get from the harder form stressful exercise, you know, mm -hmm. that especially with limitless, limitless now that Chris Hemsworth, uh, one of the most admired, one of the fittest person in this world. In fact, he's regarded as the top 1%. The stuff that he did in limitless, I don't think many people would dare to attend it. You know, it was just incredible. You know? And being a top movie star, a popular hot movie star, mm. and for him to listen to my experience and actually say that, gee, he can learn from it, that he is thinking uh, about aging, that he realized that what well, in front of him, that's what he's going to face. That if he were to start now and start pre preparing, you know, by the time he get there, he would have changed the chemistry in his body, his mind, you know, and bring him closer to what he wanted, you know, at that age. So I think so. Yeah. I, I know how much it's helped me personally and how much I've gained out of my practice. And I'm glad to have found it before I needed it. Um, I know a lot of people come um, to classes that I speak to that have already got health complaints. Um, but yeah, from what you've said today, hopefully starting earlier is the way to and making it a regular part of your life as well is um, a way to claim some of those benefits and maintain mm. health in the long term. There's one thing about Tai Chi is cumulative. You start slow, you don't see it. It's like learning to drive, gradually become better and better at it, right? Mm -hmm. And so the benefits is cumulative. Those are things that you learn, you build up on it, and you are embedded either into, uh, you're pretty imprinting all those knowledge into your cells and gradually, and your body are getting stronger and your mind too. And so the earlier you start, you know, the more, benefits you're going to reap from it mm. in the long run you know and be, when we're young we tend to we can't see further you know our vision uh you know are shorter and mm. as we get older we say as we mature we start to open up and see further you know further uh, and it's good that now this topic is now you know with chris with this limitless i believe this is going to make a big it's going to revolutionize because with all the scientists, all the research, you know, all the, it's a very educational, you know, uh, movie documentary. In fact, looking at it, I learned so much from it, you know, mm. and to be a part of it, you know, uh, it, it's really, uh, tremendous. I, I'm actually still flabbergasted that why yeah, Aaron, uh, Darren Aronofsky, that a very well-respected director, you know, his movies are always about very surreal and very psychological, that for him, you know, to pick me to to play this, this part, I I was told that he personally picked me for for this part. You know, the I'm actually very surprised and very thankful that it's given uh, a platform. You know, for me to uh, bring out some of this uh, knowledge that I have learned about Tai Chi to share with uh, with everyone. Just like 1976, I introduced Tai Chi to the Australian public. You know, and I believe over 200,000 Australian, you know, have now learned Tai Chi or passed through the academy that uh, I started, you know, and the instructors, they continue to, to spread. And so this could be the next phase that for, you know, maybe now I can contribute something back to humanity that one day, you know, uh, people will, you know, know more about this and then start to learn it at a young age, uh, incorporate into the school. Like you say, to help with the uh, the studies, the stress. Now, mm -hmm. also with COVID, it seems that ten percent of the population will end up with long COVID. That means that they're going to have certain illnesses, which is going to be very debilitating for them for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. right? Now, at the very least, Tai Chi will be fantastic for them. You know, mind, body, and spirit healing, and all within your reach. And all actually quite simple and easy to do. 
Mm. Almost as easy as driving a car or riding a bicycle. Grandmaster Cole, I think that's a really good place to finish this interview. So thanks very much for your time. Um, I feel like we really came full circle there. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. You know, and it's a great uh, that with the question, the, the the interview that I'm able to express a lot of things that I've kept in my mind. Hopefully, we can get the word out there. Yes, thank you. Thank you.